and today I am going to review the new Aura Rings. I've got two of them here. I've got the black Stealth Heritage size 13 ring, which is the one I use. And I've got my Weiss uh, Balance Silver size 8 ring. Um, so we're going to take a deep dive into this. Uh, I'm going to review the rings, the app, the software, and everything in between. Um, I'm from alexfigures.com. Well, actually, I'm not from alexfigures.com. I just write over at alexfigures.com. So if you're watching this on my blog at alexfigures.com, hi, welcome. If you're watching this at YouTube, be sure to head over there because I do have a very comprehensive review. Like, it's, it's really long, like 10,000 words long. I told you it's long. Um, but it covers everything. So if you're interested in buying one of these, I highly recommend checking that out. Uh, I've got a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel, um, you know, training with this ring, EMF, all sorts of other things. So check them out as well. Um, otherwise, just ask if you've got a question about this. I have been an Aura Ring user for a couple years now. Here's my Gen 1 big chunky thing, which I still love compared to the new one. Yeah, I used this for about two years or so, um, and now this one for a couple months. So I've got a lot of experience with Aura Ring. I've researched a lot. I've looked at the technology behind it all. Um, a lot of my clients use it. So yeah, I know a lot about it. So look at me, I know a lot about it. Anyway, so yeah, feel free to, well, first check out all my content, but also um, feel free to ask a question if you want to know more. One other thing is uh, Aura have given me a discount code. It is my name, Alex Fergus, all one word, A-L-E-X-F-E-R-G-U-S. And um, you can plug that in and you should save a few dollars or a few percent. I'm not 100% too sure. It seems to change every now and then. But um, I do get a kickback from that. So if you don't want to help me, um, don't use the code. But then, of course, you'll pay more. So, you know, it's a win-win if you use it. Anyway, let's get into it. So what I'm going to do with this review is I'm going to cover three parts. I'm going to do uh, the ring itself, the physical ring. Uh, and then I'm going to do the app, and then I'm going to do the software. So it might take a while, um, so grab a coffee or kombucha or ginger beer, whatever you want to drink, and um, enjoy. And if you want to speed it up, play it in fast forward mode. All right, so firstly, uh, let's get into, you know, you know what I'll do? I'll do an overview first. All right, so what do we know about this ring? It's $2.99, the starting $2.99, actually this one's $3.99, this one's $2.99. Uh, it tracks your sleep, your activity, uh, your recovery, your resilience. Um, it tracks a ton of metrics, has a really cool app, syncs to your app, shows you a ton, all this data, and or have come up with some really neat algorithms giving you like key takeaways, you know, like how well recovered you are and your sleep score and all that cool jazz. Um, this is the second generation product. The first one, like I said before, is a lot bigger. Um, the new one is much smaller, has an increased battery life. It's now over a week long. The other one was only a couple of days. Um, has some advanced sensors inside like more accurate body temperature upgraded cpu um and also comes with a wireless charging device um so yeah that's a bit about it let's get into it so firstly uh the sensors in this ring include a body temperature sensor uh include infrared optical led sensors and that's what's measuring your heart rate and movement oh not movement sorry and um heart rate variability and then the ring can pull that data and come up with uh they, they've got these unique algorithms i go into the technolo technology man i really struggle with that word the technical details i don't know what's going on I, I i missed my supplements this morning perhaps anyway um in the first article i go into how it all works i didn't do that for the second review because i've already done it uh and you can head over and read that first review uh everything in uh, the one what the one ring to rule them all slow down alex uh and that has the review on this first one but also goes into how all this amazing technology works um so i'm not going to cover that again today but um yeah it's got that and it's also got an accelerometer and a gyroscope in it so that's what's picking up the movement and also using that data for sleep okay uh from these sensors the ring i've got i've got my notes here because there's a lot to talk about from these sensors, the ring is able to measure heart rate, heart rate variability, respiration rate, movement, activity, body temperature, sleep, including sleep stages, sleep latency, wake times, and much, much more, much more. I like, honestly, a lot. And you're gonna see some of this in part two when I show the app. Um, so yeah, that's what it's doing. All through your finger. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Uh, actually, yeah, no, let's look at, uh, let's look at the design next. So, 
Design wise, um, you can see the ring on me here. This is a size 13 Stealth Heritage. This is the size 8, it's my wife's Silver Balance. Okay, now the difference, if you go to the website, oiring.com, um, you'll see the options between the two designs. The Heritage, if I can get off my finger here, is uh, quite, it's got a flat top. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the camera here so you can see it down here. Alright, oh, oh, here we go. So the Heritage, this one, has a flat top here. If it shows up, I don't even know where it is. See that flat top? And now the balance has a peak, a very small peak. Now if you go on the website, see that peak? This is the flat top. If you go on the website, these differences are quite pronounced. Okay, and um, I was actually quite, I don't know what the word is, surprised, disappointed. Um, they're not, when you see them in person, I mean, you can't really tell the difference between them, can you? Like, it took me a while there to figure out even where the design was. Uh, is that a bad thing or a good thing? I mean, it doesn't really bother me. I didn't buy it for its looks. I bought it for its, bought it for its features. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I get a lot of people asking me, oh, should I go the peak, the balance, or the flat heritage? To be honest, it doesn't really matter. Just get whichever one. <laughs> whichever one's going to ship fastest. Um, Color-wise, they do a silver. They do a black, which is a glossy black, which I don't have. They do a rose gold. And then they do the stealth one, which is like a matte black. The stealth one is $100 extra. Okay. Uh, and then they do a balance diamond, which is like a silver with five diamonds through the middle there. Um... That costs like a thousand dollars. This one is two ninety nine. This one is three ninety nine. Uh, in hindsight, if if I lost that, there goes my phone. I'm just gonna let it ring. If if I lost that, uh, my three ninety nine ring. To be honest, I'd probably just go and buy the cheaper one. But that's because I don't really care too much about how it looks. And um, yeah, that's just me. Anyway, uh, you can see on the inside here. Let's see if we can see it. See the chips, see the sensors in there? And some and somewhere through that uh, band is the battery. Sorry about the phone. It'll stop soon, I hope. And you can see the sensors in here as well. So it is pretty small, especially compared to the first one. Again, I'll show it on my finger. So yeah, I've got my uh, wedding band ring on this finger and um, the size 8 on my pinky. So yeah, it's not too bulky. And then we're going to come back up here. And this is like super professional uh, videoing. So yeah, that's the design. Uh, two design shapes, multiple colors. Um, impressions of the ring, it is very light. It's made of titanium. The first one was made of ceramic, and it was quite dense, plus it is big bulky. These are light. Like, honestly, the first time I picked it up, I, I almost thought it was like plastic. Um, but it's not, it's titanium and it's super strong. Like, I'm squeezing that now. I didn't hear anything, but it gets to a point where I'm like, oh, will I break it? You know what? One day, I might try break it. Just for YouTube uh, entertainment. Maybe I'll break this one. We'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, they are super strong. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, I farm with it, I use it every day, I use it in the sauna, I go swimming with it, haven't had a problem. Um, I've trained with it a little bit, not too much, I haven't been doing that much training lately, sorry. Um, but I am going to go out and do a video with me training on it to see how it holds up. Uh, I also trained with this one and did some quite heavy deadlifts and it held up fine. Um, however, there are a few scratches on it. I don't know if you can see it here, because it's focusing on my face. But there are some tiny scratches. You know what? Head over to alexfergus.com and check out the review because I'll put some photos up of those scratches. <coughs> I just burped. Um, I'm not worried about it. Like, some people are taking it off whenever they go in the garden or do stuff. Um, I, I don't really care. Uh, like, if it gets all scratched up, so be it. Like, as long as it's tracking my sleep and all that, I'm happy. Uh, but I can understand why people, you know, they spend a lot of money for a ring, they want it to look good. I don't know how this will hold up, because my wife hasn't been using it during the day, she only sleeps with it. So, there's no scratches on this one, but being the silver, it might actually be better. Being the matte black on here seems to be more prone to the scratches. 
So, you know, if you are worried about it, maybe go silver. I'll keep you updated though. Like, subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll, I'll put an update up. Battery life, we're getting, oh, I'm getting, I, I, I did eight days, all right, and I checked the battery and it was 20%. At that point, I think that was in the morning. I think if I went to bed that night, it may not have tracked my sleep that night, um, though it would still retain the, the data. So, you know, eight days is a long time. They say a week, uh, but yeah, I pushed it out to eight days. But um, pretty good. I mean, again, like you could charge it once a week and you don't have to worry about it every day. When you are charging it from 20% back to 100%, it took me about 40 minutes. Um, but when you're doing like your day-to-day -day charge, because I charge it every morning, I get up, put it on the charger, I, you know, five, 10 minutes, and it seems to top it up. Um, so it's, it's not long. You know, you put it on when you go have a shower, you put it back on after the shower. And you don't have to take it off when you're showering, by the way. Uh, for me personally, I get up in the morning, I take it off, I sync my data and it's charging and then i do a juve red light session for you know 15 minutes then i put it back on so it works perfect for me um it comes with a wireless charger i'll show you this one so this is the charging device here which is quite nice compared to the gen 1 charger uh and yeah it doesn't have any like connections exposed connections you just set it on the dock like so okay so it can fall off Whereas the Gen 1, it had these exposed metal points. You pushed it in and it would stay there. Comes with a USB-C cable. This one. So that's pretty cool. Uh, when you charge it, I don't have a PowerPoint anyway. Anyway, there's a tiny white light at the top. It blinks or flashes or glows, um, pulses when it's charging and it remains on when it's charged so it's pretty easy to know what's going on otherwise there's no uh there's no buttons there's no screens there's no displays on this there's no moving parts well there's the gyroscope and accelerometer accelerometer inside so i'm assuming that's moved but moving but you can't see anything like, i mean there's no it's not going to get caught up on anything there's no uh inputs or plugs or you know no, no places for water or dirt to get into it is i don't know if i mentioned it but it's a waterproof for 100 meters i believe which is insane like i mean if you're going 100 meters down like that's pretty impressive um the charger though one thing i don't like about this is you have different charging docks devices pads for each ring so i've got my size 13 one and then my size 8 one now that kind of annoyed me because i if we go traveling like if we go away for a weekend we have to take two on not for a weekend if we go traveling for like an extended period we have to take two charges like i've got to take mine and my wife has to take hers uh and also on a day-to-day -day basis we have to um just had a thought we have to have both of them out on the bench you know so she can charge hers and i can charge mine which is kind of annoying like you'd think a wireless charging device that would just be able to charge all ring sizes but my thought that i had like a few moments ago when i when you lost me for a few seconds there i wonder if i can put my big one on the small charger if it will still ring charge i'm gonna try that i'll let you know how it goes uh but anyway that's a bit of a downside but hopefully i can use the smaller one uh what else what else it's got airplane mode just like the first generation one did so you can turn bluetooth transmitter off so it's not radiating you it's not pulsing you with um the bluetooth radiation which is a big thing for me uh and um yeah that's cool so to to take it out of that airplane mode all you do is oh i just put it on the charger and then sync it and then that re-enables the transmitter and then i'll turn my phone on sync it up and you can get all the data and then from there you can put it back into airplane mode it's quite a simple process um that's about it on the ring side I think we should get into the app um, just trying to think yeah if I've missed anything or you want to know more check out the review because there's so much in there I just want to keep this quick even though it's already been 14 minutes crazy uh, but yeah let's get into the review of the app because we've already done the review then we'll do the app review and then we'll do the cloud review and then that'll be the end of me talking all right, so now I'm going to go through the Aura Ring app. This is the iPhone app. Um, I haven't used the Android app, so for those of you who have uh, got Android, you'll just have to 
bear with me and hope that this is similar. So you may have noticed as soon as I logged in there, up above the top of the screen, just under the time there, um, it came up updating and this blue bar just uh, flashed across the screen. Um, so what's happening there is my phone is in Bluetooth mode or Bluetooth is enabled and um, it was just syncing to the ring, which is right beside my phone here. Uh, but because I'd already done an update this morning, um, that update was only a second or two. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is uh, turn the ring into airplane mode. So for that, I'm going to go up to the top right hand corner and this, this shows all the data um, about your ring. So it's got your battery level. So I've just taken it off the charge there hundred percent and um, you can turn it into ring airplane mode there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that, turn it into airplane mode, it takes a few seconds, done. So now the ring is, uh, the Bluetooth transmitter is turned off and I'm also going to turn off Bluetooth on my phone. Okay, cool. So now first thing first, when you log in uh, or you open up the app, you see um, the readiness score. Now, if you've read this over at alexfigures.com, my aura ring review, uh, pretty much I go into this in a lot of detail on the blog. So if you haven't already, head over to alexfigures.com, read that review. Uh, this video is just meant to complement that review. So anyway, first things first, you see your readiness score, which is out of uh, 100, I believe. Um, so that, yeah, I'm not going to go into all that details, but that, that number just shows you uh, your state of health. Um, how well recovered you are, you know, uh, all those sort of things um, as soon as you open the app. So that's the first thing I'm looking at. Then there's a little bit of text there, how you're feeling. That changes on day to day. To be honest, I don't, I mean, it's cool the first few weeks when you have the app, but after that, you kind of stop reading it. Or at least I do. Um, oh, and then it's got your optimal bedtime is between 8.45 and 9.45. Funny, because in the review, I mentioned how I hadn't seen that for a while. I was actually looking further down in the app. So um, I'll have to go back and update that. So that's a cool feature. That's new with this app, how, it, how it's looking at all your data and uh, giving you your recommended bedtime. So um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So then last night, as you scroll down, remember this is the home dash. Uh, it said I slept for just under eight hours and it's got the sleep time there, 10, 15 to 6.30. Um, resting heart rate, it was 50 beats per minute. Uh, the score was 82. Um, don't quite understand that little graph there. Uh, and then it's got your activity recommendations, which I personally don't care about. Uh, and because it's first thing in the morning, I haven't done any activity that's showing up as next to nothing. So that's the, the home screen. Uh, what else we got? We've got the menu on the top left where you can jump into your sleep, readiness, activity, and trends. We'll get to them soon. Plus you've got settings. Uh, top right, we have that Bluetooth button, which I just pressed. Um, bottom left, we have this calendar function. And all this does is shows uh, what, well, it shows the calendar, obviously, but it shows what days um, you've achieved good readiness, good sleep, and good activities. And uh, you'll see some days I've got three dots, some days one, some days two. Um, so that's what that's alluding to. Personally, I don't really use that screen either. Um, and then I can scroll from left to right to see different days. Um, and then I've got this plus symbol here um, where I can go in and add notes. Uh, and I thought this would be going to be a great feature. And again, for those that have read my first blog review on the Aura Ring, um, and then now the newest one, you'll know I'm quite uh, passionate about this tagging correlation pattern tracking feature uh, that I've been wanting for a long time. And unfortunately, it's still not there. I'm sure they brought in this notes uh, function, but it doesn't really do much unless you want to go back and look at your own uh, data and be like, oh, okay, well, on September the 5th, I drank alcohol. That might be why my day was uh, a little bit, no, my sleep was a little bit off or something. But anyway, as I um, scroll back, you know, you can see how the data changes. So this was yesterday, eight and a half hours sleep. You know, I ended up doing, uh, what was it? 10, over 10 Ks of walking, uh, five and a half hours of inactivity time. And I did actually add a note yesterday. I was playing around with it. So that's why I came up worried or stress. Uh, and then it said what time I went to bed. And you can do that for any day. I mean, you can scroll all the way back. Nine and a half hours, that was a good sleep. Um, and then I can hit those two hours and take me back to today. So that's the main dash. Um, and then now I can click sleep, I can click activity, I can click readiness, and um, 
I actually haven't seen this screen before. So all I did there was click that readiness number at the top um, and it gives you a bit more overview obviously about your data, sleep, so it's got your sleep, the time you went to bed, um, activity, that's cool. And then what's that little button down the bottom? All right, so anyway, let's go through this menu. So sleep, the sleep menu, again, um, shows your breakdown between uh, your REM sleep, light sleep, deep sleep, and awake time. So you can see in that graph there, uh, deep sleep's on the bottom. And then you can see your sleep times, sleep efficiencies, total bedtime, heart rate, all this amazing data. And then of course your sleep score, which is a, or a algorithm uh, or a calculated score. So when you're getting 85 and above, you're getting that little crown. That's why I didn't get it last night, but I did the night before. Okay, and then you can scroll down, you see your sleep contributor. So this is pretty much showing more of the makeup of your sleep. So, you know, total sleep, um, efficiency, how many times you woke up versus uh, how long you're in bed, uh, tranquility, wake ups throughout the night, uh, REM sleep, and your percentage, deep sleep and your percentage, uh, latency, how long it took to fall asleep, timing, which is in relation to your environment's light cycles. Uh, and so I can click any of these and get a bit of data, um, you know, about it if you're not too sure what REM sleep is or what, how much deep sleep you can get. And then also down here, as you see, uh, sleep stages. So this shows the breakdown of your sleep throughout um, the night. Let's go back here. So I can see uh, I didn't wake up until, I actually had a pretty good sleep last night. I don't recall waking up, which is what my aura ring saying. So you can see a lot of their deep sleeps earlier on and then it goes to REM and then obviously lighter sleep in the morning. And then you can see your resting heart rate throughout the night plus the average. Pretty cool. So I like all this sort of stuff. Um, and it's great if you want to track your sleep. Readiness score, again, I'm not going to explain this because I've done it in the article and I don't want to take up too much time in this video. But yeah, you can see everything here. The You can see your readiness, which is actually the blue or green bar and your resting heart rate, which is the white dot. You can see your heart rate variability there, res uh, respiration rate, body temperature deviation. Unfortunately, you can't see your actual body temperature and then your readiness score and how that was calculated. Uh, again, you can click on any of these points to learn more about it. Heart rate variability throughout the night, plus your averages and max, rest in heart rate. Cool. And then uh, we can go activity. And um, you can see all your activity and again, you got all your data in here. So it's really, really cool. If you love looking into stats and metrics and learning about your body, you're gonna love all this. Um, all right, so now the other cool feature is this trends feature. So I can go in here and I can choose, let's say sleep score, and it's gonna plot it on a graph. I can. All right, so I just crashed the uh, video recording software then as I turn my phone to landscape mode. So you can turn your phone to landscape mode and you obviously see these uh, graphs and charts in a lot more user-friendly layout. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna break this again. But anyway, so here I can see my sleep score. I can round it off to daily, monthly, weekly uh, data points. So I can see over December, January, February this year, my sleep overall suffered a little bit. That is summertime here in New Zealand, plus we got married, so you know my sleep dropped off. But uh, come winter time, you know, July, August, September, you can see it's it's a lot higher than it was last year as well. I sleep really good in winter time when it's cold and dark. Um, and you can do that for any metric. So I can go to sleep stages uh, and average that out monthly, weekly, that's actually pretty cool. I haven't been in that one before. Um, you can see your wake up time and average that out over monthly. So 7.30, so typically I'm waking up about 7.30. That was pretty late over summer. <laughs> um, and you can go through your readiness data. So I could see my readiness score um, over all these months and see when it drops down. I mean, if you're training and you're, you know, you wanna look back and how a particular training program works. Maybe you ran it for three months and your readiness score is just really low. Maybe you won't use that training program again. Maybe you'll, you'll you know, take some some of the volume out or in the intensity out, or maybe you'll know you have to prioritize your sleep during that period. Or maybe if you're training for an event, you can um, use this to, you know, make sure you're, you're tapering in time and, you know, the body's at its peak performance come game day. There's so much, so much data in here. I mean, heart rate variability, body temperature. For those that have read my article on temperature, 
uh, body temperature and the importance of tracking it at alexfigures.com you'll know why I like um, I really like this so this this here see there's a bit of a spike um, I actually got uh, like I, know, I got a fever or food poison or something then it's a few weeks before our wedding uh, so you can see how it's just spiked up there um, so yeah really cool data here uh, and then again, I can do the same for activity. So all of this is accessible through the app. Uh, what I'm going to show you next is the um, cloud dash, which shows all this data that we've just seen now, but in a lot more detail. Um, and the trans function is really, really cool. One final thing I'll just mention this app is where are we? 2.3.4. <laughs> So, um, and that's current as of 24th of October, 2018. So if you're watching this, you know, in November or even 2019, chances are the app's been updated. There's probably new features and, you know, maybe even the layouts change. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, now we're going to jump online and uh, show you the dash. Alrighty. So this is the third part of my 2018 ordering review. And, uh, I am coming to you from New Zealand, uh, <laughs> recording this. Uh, on the 24th of October. So if you haven't read my review at alexfigus.com, I highly recommend checking that out because in that review, I go into a lot more detail. So part three, we look at the uh, Aura Ring or the Aura Cloud uh, dash. So if you are a user of the Aura Ring, you have your account, which you log into on the app. Um, you can use those details. Head over to cloud.auraring.com, log in and you'll get this screen. Okay, so this is similar to the data we just saw on the iPhone app, but you just get a lot more detail and you know more space obviously on the screen. So uh, let's look through this. So we've got the sleep score here, um, 82. Uh, activity, I haven't done anything today. Readiness, 81. And you can click on each one and you're gonna see all that data we saw on the app. But again, there's more of it and um, that's cool. That's a new feature as well. So you can click on it and then learn all about each point, just like you could on the app as well. Um, so you can see all this data, you can see your sleep stages, you can see your heart rate variability throughout the night. So if there's a particular time, you know, you want to look at what happened at two o'clock, okay, my heart rate variability, the heart, HIV was 66, rest in heart rate 53, I was in light sleep at that point. Temperature devi deviation, respiration rate. So it's all, it's all there. Cool, cool, cool stuff, right? And then of course I can click back to a day and it will all update. I can do that for activity. Um, see all the data here. I don't want to go into activity too much. And then readiness. Again, you can select any day. Plus, you can see the trends up here. All right, and that's just your day-to-day -day trends. And that's just your score. So for some reason on the 15th, my readiness was really low. Uh, really low. Anyway, it bounced back all right. So, um, okay, cool. Now, that's all good. I'm, I don't want to go into too much detail on that. I've actually done a full video on the cloud dash. You can check out on my YouTube channel. So go have a look at that if you want to learn more about the, this dash. But one cool feature before we go is the trends feature. So you saw this uh, in the iPhone app, but it was only one data point. In uh, the cloud dash here, you can overlay data points, all right? Plus you can change the time frame. So I've got data going way back. It's June 2016. Let's pull this forward here. So I can see all the data here. All right, and now what I can do is I can change any metric. So, you know, I've got here bedtime start and then I've got sleep score. And so, oh, and I've smoothed this out to be monthly. I could go daily, but it's very messy, very noisy. I can go weekly, uh, but for this day, and since, since we're looking at over two years worth of data, I'll go to monthly. All right, so what this is showing me, I mean, this is where it's really powerful, the data, because you can start interpreting things, right? So here I can see like my bedtime start is this purple down the bottom and my sleep score is this orange. So here I can see when my um, sleep uh, bedtime start was 9 o'clock, 9.30, 9.45, my um, sleep score was pretty good. And then you see there's actually a bit of an inverse uh, relationship here so as my um, bedtime start was later so here we're around what's that 10 30 that's 11 11 11 uh, you can see my sleep score dropped off and then as my bedtime start came earlier again so we're back to 9 45 here my sleep score started improving again. So little things like that, it's pretty fascinating. I mean, there's two years worth of data there. It's a lot of data points uh, and the trend is pretty obvious, right? Like if you if you could inverse the sleep score 
I'd say it would it would line up pretty well with those peaks and troughs. Um, and then down here, I've got my deep sleep, and I think that's the average through the middle there. Uh, and again, I can change that to anything. Sleep latency, I can go into activity, I can go total burn, um, I can go HRV score, which was a new feature way back in whenever that was, mid-2017, which is why there's no data here. Uh, and again, I can overlay that with anything. All right, so it's, it's really, really cool. I can dial in to a certain period. So, you know, let's look at my wedding sort of period and then honeymoon and then monthly. Let's we'll change that to weekly. You can even go to daily. And you can see what's going on here with uh, data in a certain range, right? Like this is a two, three month range there. Um, what day did I get married? That's a bad question, isn't it? 17th, so I wouldn't have worn my ring on the wedding day. Uh, but you can see, um, what have we got? Bedtime end. It's quite late. <laughs> um, so, you know, you see all sorts of all, all, uh, sorts of cool data here. Uh, and then I can keep adding charts. So midpoint, you know, I can just add more and more charts. And this is why it's very, very cool. So yeah, that's the trends thing. Um, and you can also do this uh, for, oh, sorry, you can also export the data. So when I was writing a review on um, how sleep, lack of sleep makes you fat, I was curious to see what time I was going to bed and how long I was sleeping for. So I actually exported all my sleep data and uh, just had an Excel document and you can crunch the numbers however you want. So it is very, very cool. There is another feature, uh, the Aura Teams dash. Um, I'm not going to show you that because it's got all my clients details uh, so I don't really want that coming up but it's very very cool for that you'll have to head over to the alexfergus.com uh, article the aura ring article because I've got some screenshots on there but that's that's an amazing feature I don't know if that's officially launched yet but I know I've been fortunate enough to test it out and uh, if you are a sports coach or a personal trainer or a health coach you're gonna love it so anyway that's the aura ring cloud so um yeah again I hope if you do have any questions uh, about my review or the ring or any of these features feel free to um leave them in the comments below below if you're on youtube or in the discuss comments if you're if you're at alexfigures.com if you are looking at ordering this ring um i have been given a discount code it's simply my name alexfigures.com i'll spell it out for you here uh though if you're watching this oh jesus there we go alexfigures.com if you're watching this um on my website or on YouTube, you can probably see my name. That discount, I don't know exactly what it is, uh, so just put it in and, and see what happens. It seems to change. So I'm not gonna say something in case this video is around for a year or two. Um, but a bit of a heads up, I do get a cut from that. Uh, it's a bit of a commission. So I mean, we both benefit. You save and I get a cut. If you don't want me getting a cut, you don't like that idea, then um, don't use it and just pay a little bit more. It's all good. <laughs> anyway, uh, again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you are watching this on YouTube, please give me a thumbs up. Um, and also check out all my other Aura Ring videos because I have a lot. Uh, I've got a lot of videos on the first generation ring um, and I'm going to produce a lot more for the second generation. So if you want to see me training with the ring, please let me know. If you want to see me I don't know, doing something with the ring or you know want to know more about the app or something like that, let me know because I can always get on uh, here and do another video. But if you are watching this on YouTube and you haven't read the review, I highly recommend heading over to alexfirst.com and reading that review. I'll put links in the notes below because it's it's very comprehensive. It's like 50 odd pages. Um, so don't let that freak you out. But if you know it is a premium product, you are talking $2.99, $2.50, I guess, with a discount code. Um, it's a lot of money. So you want to make sure you do your research and know a little bit about the ring before committing to it. Um, so yeah, enjoy and thanks and I am going to sign off.